Hi everybody, welcome back to Bearded Reef. Um, unfortunately this week's video is a bit of bad news. Um, not what I wanted, but I said I'd show you it all. Okay, so welcome back everybody. Um, unfortunately, two lots of bad news this week. Um, it's not been great to be honest with you. Um, kind of went from bad to worse, so yeah. Um, no point in skirting around it. The very first thing that happened, um, I'll show you the video is kind of split into two parts, the two different things that's happened. So, first part that's happened is um, my Blue Devil Zoas have Zoopox. So, not great news. Um, I know people say it's only Zoas, but they're my Zoas and that's that. So, um, yeah, they've got Zoopox. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you that just now, show you what happened and. Um, what I'm doing about it just now. Okay, so here you can see um, the actual Blue Devils was there. Now, if you notice the right hand side kind of of the, the cluster as such, um, the polyps are kind of slightly closed a little bit. Now, this wasn't really anything I was overly worried about. Um, I've noticed it before, but as you'll see now, it doesn't look good here. Um, this was the lights off. Um, I used a torch just to shine in and noticed all the little white dots. Now I did think this was maybe just sand to start with, so I used the turkey baster and tried to blast it all off. Um, there was some bits of sand that came off, but not all of it. Um, and this is kind of what I was left with. So little white dots here. Done a bit of googling, turns out it's Zoopox. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not really great to be honest with you. So here's what I decided to do. So I got a little tub with the, the tank water, um, some rubber gloves, safety glasses, Remember to put these on if you're going to be playing about with Zoas. Um, really important that you don't get any palytoxin squirted in your eyes. So, like that. I've got some Gorilla Glue here for sticking the frags down. And some frag plugs. So, my plan for this, um, I'm going to lift the frag out of the tank and split it up and see what I can do now. The, there is a treatment that you can do for Zoopox. Um, you can get it in America, but you can't get it in the UK. It's banned here. And it's API, and I believe it's called Foreign 2. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description so you can see what that is. But like I say, you can't get it in the UK. So I'm kind of a bit lost here as to what to do. So I've took it out anyway, as you can see here. Um, this is the frag that you seen in the previous video. So what I wanted to do first was just with these little tweezers was see you know if I could confirm if it was grains of sand there so I just thought I would try and scrape a couple of them off um, see if it was sand. Now the first one I went to definitely wasn't sand it was more a kind of gunky consistency um, I just thought I would try a couple more to see if there was any that was actually sand you know and if I was just kind of overreacting um, but no, unfortunately they were, they were all the zoopox so I don't know how you get zoopox if anyone knows put it in the description and let me know but I, I have no idea um, but I've got them. So yeah, I wanted to kind of make sure that it didn't spread to any other coral, so I have took it out of the tank and, like I say, we'll, we'll chop this one up. Um, I'm going to split it up into three separate frags so that hopefully, even if one of the frags survives, it means that I've, I've still got some of them. You know, I, I do really like this coral, it's really nice, the colours on it's nice, so I want to try and save a bit of it if possible. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll cut it up and see. Okay, so I've just got my, my snips here now. Luckily this kind of bit of rock's got a couple of wee bits that you can cut off pretty easily. So I'm just going to make a couple of little kind of snips in here to break the rock. Um, and as you can see the zoa kind of flops a bit. must apologise for the, the actual focus on this. It's a bit blurry sometimes. But I'll just take the little razor blade and cut the actual um, zoa itself just through where the polyps join. Still a little bit on there, so... Just make one more little cut in there and that should come off. Yep, so that's that bit off. So there's some for one frag. Um, obviously I'll leave some on the frag plug that's here. And I want to kind of cut off this bit on the side. So I'm just going to see if I can take off some of this um, without actually causing much damage to it. So I think this bit of the side um, just kind of bend a bit there and it broke. So we'll try and cut off this. Um, this might be of interest if you are looking to actually frag some of your zoas, then this is obviously the way that I would do it anyway, but um, 
yeah, I've kind of broke this this bit of rock here, so you should be able to take the Stanley blade and um, cut through them. So if you just obviously don't cut through the actual zoa polyp itself, but I don't know the proper name for it, but a little bit's where the polyps join to each other. You can cut through that bit of skin. Um, that won't do any harm at all. Um, just don't cut through the actual polyp itself. So if you cut through that little bit there, um, then that should be fine. Now there was three or four, I think. Um, little strands holding this one on, so it took a bit just to, to cut through them. Now try and do a clean cut, don't do like a kind of scissor or saw in motion. You want to just kind of push down and have one clean cut through there. So that's what I've tried to do anyway here. Um, it's not overly easy, um, especially due to the fact that I think I might lose these anyway. So you know, you can take your time and be a hell of a lot neater than what I've done here, but I just want to try and split it up a bit. So. You know, I mean, there was some of these that didn't have the, the actual grey, or the, sorry, the little kind of swap box on them. So, like I say, hopefully if I can save some of them, then fantastic. But I did do some research on swap box, asked a few people, different opinions. Some of them said, leave it, it'd be fine. Others said, get out straight away. Um, so I've decided not to take any risks and get out straight away, because I've got some more zoas coming. So I wanted to get this one out before I have any issues with that. So this has just got one little strand left here, um, just give that a little nick through with the blade and that should remove that. I'm trying not to saw that, there we go. So that's two bits off there to go on the frags and the one bit for the remaining colony that I had. So yeah, it's not ideal. Um, you know, I don't know how the zoopox got in. I did get these from Mail Order Coral, so whether it came with the zoopox from Mail Order Corals, I don't know. I did have another colony of the Fire Nice that came with an Aptasia from Mail Order Corals, so not been great to be honest with you with them. Um, I've had quite a few issues with Mail Order Corals now, so hand on heart, I don't think I'll be using them again. I think I'll stick to elsewhere, but um, yeah, I'm not saying that this came with zoopox on it, but none of the other corals in the tank have it. I've checked all them and everything seems fine, so. I don't honestly know um, where it came from, but fingers crossed we'll get rid of it. So, apologies, I'm just shaking the bottle there for the glue. So, we'll get these frag plugs glued up. And like I said, this is the Gorilla glue. Make sure you get the green top bottle, not the blue one. The green one's the one that you want. It's the gel one. Um, comes at a much better consistency rather than the the water one. Um, it means that you can basically dab a blob of gel on there like that, like I've done, and stick the little zoa to it. So. Like I say, these have got kind of bits of rock on them, so it's easy enough for me to just stick the rock down to the frag plug. You're not having to worry about getting any glue on the zoas. Um, again, apologies for the focus on this. This camera's not doing great with that. I thought it would have focused a bit better, but there we go. Um, yeah, so just dab some of that on. Then I just put it in the water again to cure it. It seems to cure a bit quicker in the water. It takes maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so to cure. Um, so I just sit it in the water, and that seems to cure the glue a bit quicker. So we'll get that one done, get the other one done, um, and then my plan is, I've set up another tank which I'll show you in a minute, uh, I'm going to move them to that and have them in the other tank there. So in the other tank now, I'm not actually planning on treating them with anything just now, um, I don't have access to the foreign two that I was talking about from API. Um, I think you can import it but it seems quite expensive for what it is, I think I was looking at about £35-£40 for that. Um, to import it, whereas the zoa itself only cost £15, so don't get me wrong, if it started to spread to other zoas in my tank and I noticed it spreading, then yeah, I'll get some, get them all treated, but as it stands just now, touch wood anyway, that's the only one that I could see it on, um, so if it's only on that one, then it's, it's not exactly the end of the world, I can live with that. But yeah, just kind of giving it a good inspection here, um, make sure there's nothing else bad on it, but that's, that's that one glued on. We'll glue this last one on um, and then I'll show you where they're going from there. So like I say, just a, a little dollop of the gel um, on the middle of that. It's a smaller one so I've used less. And then just get a bit of the rock work that's there. Um, so you're not glued. Don't get any glue on any of the actual zoa polyps themselves. Just make sure you're on the rock work. So that's what I've done with that. We'll get that glued down and we'll get it in the tank. Now, like I say, I'm putting this in a separate tank, I'm not putting it in the tank that it just came out of. Um, I've actually changed up the kind of quarantine tank that I had, the hospital tank, so I'll show you that in a second so you can see where they're going. Um, 
but yeah, it's, it's a bit frustrating to be honest with you. Um, one of those things that, like I said previously, I don't know where it comes from. Um, if any of you guys know how you get zoopox or if you have any treatments you can get rid of them, especially the treatments that are available in the UK, then yeah, please get in touch with me and let me know. I don't think it's something that's relatively easy. I've spoken to quite a few people who said they've never had it in their life and they've kept zoos for a long time, so I think I've been extremely unlucky to get that with this one. Um, but we'll, we'll go with it. It is what it is. There's not really much more I can do now, so we just need to deal with it. Um, yeah, so I'll just let this bit of glue set on this frag plug and then we'll get them in the tank. Okay, so that should be that one pretty much set. Just touch it to make sure that it's okay. Um, which it does seem to be, so it's been in the water free bit there. Seems to be hard enough, so yep, happy with that. Um, yeah, we'll get them in and, and see how they look. These flag plugs are actually from Reef Geeks. Um, if you're interested, they've got quite a good selection of stuff there, so check out Reef Geeks and you'll be able to get them from them. Okay, so I'll take the first one here. Um, this is the little frag holder. Again, this one's one from Reef Geeks that I got. Just a clear acrylic one. Um, doesn't really, not too imposing in the tank. I'll get that put in. Um, we'll get the second one in the frag holder. So that's the actual original frag as such there. Um, that's the one that I got from Miller of Corals. So we'll get that in the tank as well, and then we'll go for this last one. Like I say, I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try it and see. Okay, so this is them in the tank, and um, they do not look happy at all. Um, don't really know if they're going to survive or not, to be fair. Seems to be quite a bit of kind of stringy stuff on them, which I'm not sure what that is. Um, but that's them in there anyway, so... Split them into three, um, I'll keep an eye on them. If I can save any of them, I will. If not, then you know it's game over for them. But I'm hopeful that I can at least save some. Um, I might frag some single polyps on just a single frag plug, just in case, but hopefully I can save some of them anyway. Well, that's the plan, at least. Yeah, so that's the, the zoas with the zoopox. Um, not really much more I can say about that, to be honest. I just need to monitor them. See what happens. I might end up losing them, but like I say, I've split them into the three frags there so that you know they're they're separated and hopefully manage to save some of them. Um, I'd like to save them all, but if I can only save one, then fantastic. At least I can save some. So yeah, that's the zoas. Um, second issue. Now I know I posted up a video a while back and we getting the tubing enemy, um, and said massive risk on my part getting the tubing enemy. You know it can eat fish, corals, everything, um, and that's come back to bite me. So, yep, um, if anybody wants a tubing enemy, there's one going here, you can have it for free, because I don't want it anymore. Um, so yeah, I'll roll this clip now and show you pretty much what's happened with that. Okay, so you might remember this um, tube enemy that I got a couple of videos back, um, put it in the tank for a while now. Beautiful looking thing, um, but I was warned at the time it could be quite deadly. So I came into the room the other night, put a light on, scared the clown, and it darted right into that tube name head first. Completely my fault, I shouldn't have done it, but it happened. So, as you can see, this is the tank, and the tube name is no longer there. So, the reason for that is I have took it and put it in this little breeder box up here. Um, obviously I didn't want another clown getting stung. So the clown at the back, as you can see here, is extremely badly stung. Um, kind of struggling, to be honest with you. I don't know if it's going to survive. One at the front's fitting healthy. The one at the back was healthy until it swam into the tube and enemy. And this is it for the front of the tank. Now, colours aren't great, but you can see what I mean. The fin's quite badly damaged. Um, the actual skin that's covered in stings. And you know, this this was an extremely healthy fish beforehand. This is the one that I had the issues with before, but. It healed up perfectly fine and was more than healthy. I came into the room, flicked the light on, didn't think, and darted head first into the tube and enemy. I seen it at the time, then it went mental and flew around the tank, 
Um, I actually thought it was going to die there and then. It was kind of looking like it was going to die. Um, this was at night time, so you know, not really much I could do at that time. So left it overnight, and this is the next again morning where it's like this. So um, it's not looking great to be honest with you. It's I mean, it's just swimming its mouth open. It's not eating. I can't get it to take any food. Um, not really sure what I'm going to do here. Uh, yeah, just completely my fault. Feel really guilty. Hopefully, it pulls through, but. Not really much I can do now, I'm afraid. I just need to try and treat it. Okay, so this is the tank that I had set up for the crab originally. You can see the frag pops I put in there. And um, that's from the zoos I showed you earlier in the video. What I've done is I've just filled the bottom of it with sand, chucked in the rock and threw the tubing enemy in there. So, this is where the tubing enemy is just now. And um, like I say, I'm going to get rid of that. So. The crab, for all yous that were wanting to know, free the crab, um, now has a friend, the tubing enemy. Don't know which one's going to win out of that, I think the crab's harder, but we'll soon find out. So That's where we stand with that. So at this point I noticed the crab starting to have a go at the tubing enemy. Um, as you can see here it's starting to kind of take little nips out of it, it's trying to bite it. So As usual the crab's on form, um, didn't expect anything less from the crab to be honest with you, it'll fight its own shadow. So. Yeah, this is the uh, famous killer crab anyway, which is, as you can see, pulling like bits at the tubing enemy. Which doesn't seem to be too bothered just now, touch wood, but we'll see what happens. One of them's going to win, and I'm not sure who it'll be. So yeah, that's the, the tubing enemy and the crab both in prison now. At least the crab's got some company and there's some sand in there. and You know, it looks like a little home now. It's even got a light. What more could you ask for? Um, yeah, so that's, that's really where my days went. Um, just fingers crossed the crab pulls, the clown pulls through, sorry. I have ordered another tank to come with another heater and pump and so on, so I'll get that in hopefully tomorrow. Get the uh, clown fish in there, get it treated, um, you know, hopefully it'll pull through from that. So, yeah, um, not ideal, but I've used up that quarantine hospital tank for the tubing enemy now, so I need another one for the clown. So, tank number three is coming now. Okay, so just finally, this is the um, little tank that I'm going to be using for the hospital tank. Again, just got this off Amazon. Um, I think it was only £10. That's this little 10 litre tank, just a kind of plastic thing. Um, I've just got a little cheap filter to go in there. So I'll stick that in. I'm just waiting on the heater coming. It's a 25 watt heater that I've got. So, you know, all in relatively cheap tank to use a hospital tank since the one I was using as a hospital tank is now the one the crab's in. So, yeah, that's the, the hospital tank that I've got now. Hopefully the heater will come tomorrow. We can get that set up, get the fish in and start getting it treated tomorrow. So, fingers crossed, things will start to improve pretty quickly then. I hope anyway. Okay, so that's um, that's really the end of that. That's that's um, today's video, I'm afraid. So, not really any good news, to be honest with you. Um, that's what it is, one of those things. You know, it's completely my fault. Um, the tube and enemy part, the, the zoopox, I don't know how that really happens, I don't, from what I've read online, nobody really knows how it comes, but the tube and enemy part, certainly 100% my fault, you know, I should should never really have bought that, to be honest with you, I was warned not to buy it from the shop that I got it from, um, I decided to go ahead and, and buy it anyway, and then, like I say, it was completely my fault for scaring the clownfish, um, put a light on the room, the clownfish darted right in the, the enemy, trying to get out of the way, and ended up stunk a bit, so... Fingers crossed it pulls through, you know, this little clownfish has been through enough already. Um, we'll just need to wait and see. Yeah, so once again, a uh, massive thanks to everybody who's already subscribed to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, if you could please consider it, it really would mean a lot to me. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, put them in the description down below and I'll get back to you on them. Now, don't forget, I've got the Instagram page as well that you can follow me on there. Um, it's actually probably the best way to get in touch with me. If you send me a message on Instagram, I'll reply to that. And, yeah, that's pretty much my story of things going from bad to worse so I'll update you in a while with how things are going um, if the clown makes it or not I'm, I'm not really sure I mean it's still swimming about just here so yeah that's that um, fingers crossed it pulls through that's all I can say really so once again thanks very much for your support guys hope you're staying safe out there take care bye bye